Hi, welcome back to our Virtual Homebuyer 101 series. This is part two. In part one, we discuss getting pre-approved. After you get pre-approved, you and I will spend a lot of time looking at houses. I will find out your absolute must-haves and your like-to-haves, your non-negotiables, and the things you could do with or without. I will stay on top of the market by sending you coming soons, price drops, back on markets, immediate listings, so that way you can be sure to find the house that fits you. When we find that house, you'll put in a contract, and then when we get the contract, the next step is the home inspection. This can be an overwhelming process because it's a lot of information, but at Harrison Real Estate, we feel that it's the most important step because we want you to be secure and confident in the purchase that you make. After the home inspection, you and I are gonna sit down and we're gonna go through the report and make a list of requests that we'd like the seller to either repair or give you a credit for. What's important to know is that the inspectors we recommend are thorough, but also really clear. So it's a true educational process for you on homing, owning and maintaining a home. This is one of the two times in which you could back out and get your deposit back in a contract. Say the home inspection is just too much for you. Or after we make that list and negotiate with the seller, we can't come to an agreement, then you are able to get your deposit back. But our hope is that that won't happen. And with Harrison Real Estate, we usually get you a very good agreement with the seller. But to take you through this overwhelming process, I wanted to bring on a home inspector that will hopefully answer all of your basic questions and let you feel a little more informed getting into this next step. So please enjoy step two, home inspection. Hi everyone and welcome to part two of our Home Buyer 101 virtual series. Today, I'm really excited to bring you a home inspector to talk you through the home inspection process. So Jim, if you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself and your business. Hi, my name is Jim Angel from Angel Home Inspection Services. I, my business is out of Suffield, Connecticut, and I provide residential and light commercial home inspections and ancillary services. Great. And could you give us a basic description for that first time home buyer, what a residential home inspection would look like? So a residential home inspection is a visual inspection of the exterior and the interior of a home to anything readily visible and accessible. Some clients think that a home inspection is a code inspection, but a home inspection is not a code inspection. It is a visual inspection of the exterior and interior of the home. Okay, great. And um, how long does the home inspection take to get the report back, all of that? You know, typically clients have 14 days to run a home inspection. Should they so, run 14 days? <laughs> so typically what I recommend is trying to schedule a home inspection as early in that process as possible. Um, the more time that you have to review the report and negotiate with your agent, the more time it will allow you in case there's questions that come up. So uh, I typically recommend trying to get in a home inspection in the, within the first 10 days. However, I have received requests lately for a home inspection at the end of that period. And when it gets to within a day or so of the end of that home inspection period, um, I typically will schedule a whole day. I'll do the inspection in the morning prepare the report during the afternoon so I could deliver it to the client so they have time to review it with their agent uh, prior to the end of their, their review process. Yeah, I definitely agree with you because last minute decisions just make everyone nervous. Right. Um, so you have the typical home inspection, but then sometimes you add on the pest termite inspection, radon inspection. Those are two common ones we see as an addition to every home. Can you talk a little bit about those or those results ready that day? <clears throat> so um, if you receive a, a pest inspection, I bring a licensed pest inspector with me uh, when requested and they can provide a results uh, that day. So what they do is they will walk around the property. They take a look at the exterior of the property, look for any indications of excess moisture, any indications of the uh, elevation of the ground being close to the siding, which may indicate areas where wood destroying insects could infest into the home. And then what they'll do is they'll search the inside of the home from the basement up 
for any indications of wood destroying insects and they're able to produce a report right there on the spot or within an hour or so. Um, as far as radon results, I use a continuous reading monitor and that sits in the basement or the lowest level of the home for a minimum of 48 hours. And it continually reads the, the air in the home and it takes monitors the radon levels roughly 20 times per hour it'll take a sample and then it will take and chart that out over the 48 hours to come up with a recommended uh, level of radon now the state's level that they call actionable and the federal level is four p curies per liter um, so anything below that, no action is required. However, if you're close to that, sometimes discussing or thinking about implementing a mitigation system might be prudent because radon levels will, will vary from day to day and season to season. Um, a couple of other services that I offer are water potability and water testing services where I would uh, come into the property. I would run the water. If you had a well, I would run it for about 40 minutes or so, sometimes longer, um, to flush the system out to ensure that the well has the ability to recover itself and that there's an appropriate amount of flow. And then I'll take the samples typically at the kitchen faucet. Those go to a laboratory and Simple water potability testing will take typically 48 hours, sometimes a little bit longer uh, for results, depending on whether it's a holiday or, or a busy weekend. Um, but if you want other results, such as lead in water, heavy metals in water like uranium and arsenic, or VOCs, such as different pesticides and um, maybe pollutants from a, a nearby gas station or something of that nature, those will take about four days to receive the results because that, that analysis is a little bit more detailed. And another service that I, I also provide is mold sampling. So for instance, if I go into a property and I notice mold in the basement or in the attic, I can offer the clients the ability to sample the areas where I suspect uh, there may be mold and send those off to a lab. And those typically take 48 hours also for results. Okay, great. And can you just tell us what radon is? Because I think that that's something we just assume people know and they don't always. Sure. So radon is a naturally occurring gas and it comes from the decay of uranium. A lot of the rocks specifically in, in the New England area, but throughout the United States have uranium small amounts of uranium in them and that because uranium is radioactive as it decays its half-life produces other isotopes and those isotopes when they decay produce a radon gas which also has a level of radioactivity and as that decay process happens it happens naturally around us uh on a day-to-day -day basis. So when you're outside, radon is actually emitting itself from the ground, but because it's not being trapped by an enclosure, such as a basement or other structure, uh, it just naturally dissipates into the air. But with a home, if it's set in certain areas, sometimes it can trap higher levels of radon gas and they will collect in, let's say a basement or a finished uh, area of the home and then they can become uh, hazardous to a person if they have prolonged exposure to it. Thank you. Um, so I had talked about a home inspection can be really scary because um, it's just so much information and it kind of feels like you're listing off every little thing wrong with the house that it needs to be done right now. Um, can you talk a little bit about the educational process of that home inspection and the difference between immediate and just general home maintenance? Sure. So when I set up my reports, I try and color code the items that go into my reports. I use blue for informational items or minor deficiencies. I use orange for a deficiency and I use red for safety items or high dollar value items. So for instance, an informational piece might be the gutters will terminate right near the foundation. So when it rains, 
the water has the ability to pool against the foundation before it drains away from the property. And sometimes that water has the ability to seep into the basement and then leave a white staining on the wall called efflorescence. Um, so I'll put information into the report that discusses that issue, what causes it and some of the ways to mitigate it. So uh, that way you can help keep a dry basement in the home. Uh, on, an orange deficiency for me would be something like I don't know, a broken door handle, a loose uh, railing on a stairway, things of that nature that need to be corrected. And then, you know, the client can decide what uh, urgency they put to co correcting it. And then, of course, the red items in my report, if it's a safety item, it's always suggested that you uh, correct those immediately. Um, and then the high dollar value items would require, you know, for instance, a furnace nearing the end of its uh, service life or a hot water heater. Both of those items are going to cost well over $1,000. So, you know, you'd want to bring in a professional to evaluate that and give you a quote for that. And it helps the buyer look at the report and determine, you know, what things are important, what things I should look at first. Well, and I also think from an agent's perspective, it helps explain it to the seller because the seller normally isn't at that home inspection so they're able to understand oh this is an immediate big need um right. that kind of no matter what buyer comes in there is going to find that that's an issue well i find a lot of times the sellers are surprised because you know you live in this house day to day and sometimes there are things that that go on that you don't notice just because you're used to being there all the time but when a home inspector comes into the home and finds, let's say, the furnace hasn't been serviced this year. You know, it just might have slipped that homeowner's, you know, thought process. And, you know, it just is a good reminder that, hey, I got to call this, the company out to have it serviced. Right, right. Um, who? Speaking of who attends the home inspection, who would you recommend is there? So I always recommend having the buyer's agent and the buyer. Um, one thing that I've noticed lately is a lot of people don't want a lot of other people in their home. So if you can keep it minimized to the amount of people that come to the home inspection, uh, it's important for the seller's well-being as well as the buyer. While we're in these times of COVID, you know, trying to minimize that interaction. Now, some inspectors don't like to have anybody there. Um, I'm of the thought process that it makes it much easier for the buyer and for the agent to understand some of the things in the report if they have the ability to see them firsthand and hear the explanation while we're at the inspection. So some buyers like to take that opportunity to bring family members to see the house. And unfortunately, a home inspection really isn't the time to bring other family members to come and see the house. It's really an important time between you as the buyer and the agent to really understand the condition of the home and be able to make a plan for that going forward process. No, I agree with you on that. And it was hard during the time of COVID when some inspectors were not allowing buyers to be there. It was very difficult for them to understand what was truly wrong in the house and wasn't. Um, the one thing I will say about a home inspection is that that's probably the last time the buyer will be in the home before closing. Um, so that's a time sometimes I recommend that people bring their tape measures so if they want to measure rooms or things like that, because you won't have that opportunity prior to the well, walk-in. The one thing that I've learned is during my home inspections, I give my client a tape measure. Um, I've have been asked many times by clients to borrow mine and then I never see it again. So it gave me the idea, hey, you know what? So I go out and I buy them in quantity and I put my company logo on them and I give them as a gift to my clients. Um, so that way they have something to take away from the inspection. Plus, if they forget their own tape measure, you know, they can still make measurements of rooms or decide where furniture may want to go while they're there. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so after we receive that inspection report, the buyer and I typically have three days to negotiate with the seller regarding things that need to be done. It's definitely happened where an inspector has noted something is wrong and the seller says, no, 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 your inspector's wrong. That, that's 
that's working fine or it's not there. How do you suggest buyers negotiate that? What, what where do they go to like clear some of those issues up? So typically, let's just use a furnace, for instance. Let's just say that um, I put in a report that I feel that the furnace needs to be evaluated by an HVAC professional because there's something that is doesn't seem to be correct. And I'll give you a for instance. Um, sometimes when people put furnaces and ductwork in their basement, they plan to have finished areas in the basement and they'll put uh, vents or louvers in that ductwork for the basement, but they never do get it finished off. And now that basement is open to the heating system. I'll recommend that that be evaluated by an HVAC professional and have that louver closed off because now that has the ability if the furnace ever backdraft to draw CO into that ductwork and push it throughout the home. Um, you know, so some homeowners, you know, may have an issue with that and say, oh, it's been like that for 10 years. It's not an issue. But, you know, that one time we have a bad storm and you have a downdraft and maybe uh, air gets pushed down that flue and it causes a backdraft, you know, it, that may not have happened yet, but it's a potential. Um, the other thing we're seeing, we talked a lot about this market with it being so crazy is that buyers are putting in as is offers, meaning that they right. are buying the home as is. And what I always tell buyers is that that means that you still run a home inspection, but it becomes an informational home inspection and the seller may not be apt to negotiate with you after. So you can still back out, but there may not be any negotiations. Do you alter your inspections at all for those as is sales? Um, I typically don't alter them for the as-is sale. What I do is I do a full home inspection. What I will do is ask the clients if they have any concerns. So, for instance, a lot of the times when you're buying a home as-is, um, the client will come through and now they're more aware that, hey, this is my one and only shot. I better find out everything I can. So what I'll try and do is give the client a little bit more time and explain things in a little bit more detail if they're so interested. So that way they have the ability to make a, an informed decision. Um, as is home inspections are, in my opinion, the same as a regular home inspection. And I think it's important for buyers to understand that they can have a home inspection even though they're purchasing as is where sometimes that's not clear to the buyers. Right. I agree with you. Um, anything else you think you want to tell first time home buyers that I may have missed? Well, when you're buying a home for the first time, I can I can attest to the fact that it's a scary uh, prosper. And the reason being is when I bought my first home, it was about $80,000. And at the time, I wasn't making much money. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to sign my name on the line here. And this is going to be forever. And, you know, what I found through my experience is you will make it through anything that you face during life. Um, and buying a home can be scary because of the amount of financial uh, outlay that you have to put down in the requirement that you're going to have to pay every month. However, you will find that um, if you are more informed about a home, it's more manageable. And I, I even answer questions from my clients even weeks or months after they've purchased the home. Just if they get into a jam, I tell them, just give me a call. And if there's anything I can do to help as far as give you information on how to approach something or who to contact, you know, I try and do that for the client because I understand. And once they have uh, their first home for a while, they recognize the fact that it's not as bad a process as they first thought when they were starting that adventure. Yeah, and I always tell my clients, keep that home inspection report because as you own that home, it can be like a checklist for you of things you want to go and make sure are still functioning right or those little repairs that needed, those doorknobs, those railings, things like that. Well, you know, I also tell my clients to keep that home inspection report because what happens if 10 years down the road, your company offers you a position out in Colorado or something and you have to sell the home? 
you can use that report to show a new prospective buyer, hey, this was the condition of the home when I purchased it. Here's all the wonderful things I've done to it since then. And this is why I'm asking the price that I'm asking. And it helps, it's a supporting document to help them be able to obtain a better price and prove the condition of the home as it is. Well, I agree there. And like you said, the more information you can give someone, the more secure they really feel in it. Right. Well, Jim, I appreciate you taking the time. If you want to uh, just give everyone your contact information and website, so if people wanted to um, go ahead and hire your company for their home inspection. All right. So this is Angel Home Inspection Services. I'm out of Suffield, Connecticut. My phone number is 860-402-6644. And my website is angelhomeinspection.com. And if you look out there, you'll see that I have a number of Google reviews. Take a look at them and uh, you'll get a feel for the types of inspections that I perform and what people are saying about my company. All right, thank you so much again, Jim. Great having you and I appreciate all the information. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity.